This video explains how to set up LORS3 Advanced with the AlphaPix line of controllers. First, let's start with some basics. We're going to assume at this point that you've reviewed our other videos that explain how to wire up your pixels, how to connect this controller to your network, and that we have already confirmed that this controller is reachable from your PC and you can reach the configuration menu. We also highly recommend that you watch our XLights 2012B video on how to use XLights 2012B, which is a free application to test your controller. That application is great for A-B testing. If you're having a problem and LOR is not working, you can test with XLights and confirm that the problem is either with XLights, your PC, or otherwise. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We've pulled up the menu here, and one part of configuring LORS3 is to first configure your controller's addressing. This is the logical addressing of how these pixels are going to be referred to in LOR. Now, this is a DMX controller. E131 is DMX over Ethernet, which is actually over TCP IP. And this is an output, this is an output, this is an output but they can be assigned different DMX universes. A DMX universe is simply 512 channels. A channel is simply turning on and off a given light. Now we're in RGB, so RGB is always grouped together in threes. So in this particular case, we have a pixel that's on. There are three channels used to make this pixel turn on. There's a red, a green, and a blue. So we have three DMX channels being used to turn this on. So, if we were to look at this particular configuration we have on the screen, you can see that for SPI output 1, which is right here, we have DMX start channel 1. Now, the DMX channels do start over for each universe. So, think of DMX universe as the container, and then individually within that container are individual DMX channels, which go from 1 to 512. So, in this particular case, we have output 1, DMX universe 1, DMX start address 1, and it says there's 340 pixels connected, but we don't actually have that many. We just have three here. So how this controller would now be referenced is this would be output 1, DMX universe 1, and this is the first pixel, so it's DMX address 1, 2, 3. Then this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now, you can also see that we have output 2 configured here to be universe 2. Now this is a very easy and logical addressing scheme and so that allows you to always match up the output, the physical output, with the logical output of universe. And then we have here universe 2, DMX address 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then so on. Now it is possible that if you purchase a sequence from another vendor you may have an addressing scheme that differs and in fact you may have a universe that spans two outputs so for example you may have universe one here and universe one here and DMX addresses let's say if there are 50 pixels connected DMX addresses 1 through 150 so that's three pixels each times 50 pixels would be 150 DMX channels so we'd have DMX of channels 1 through 150 and then 151 through 300 on the next one for example so your addressing may differ. See our other videos on how to properly configure that and what options you have. All right, so we're doing it fairly simple. Again, we have DMX universe 1, 2, 3. DMX start addresses of all 1, 1, 1. Okay, now uh, let's also talk about the LOR control panel. The LOR control panel is an item that runs in the bottom right hand corner of your system tray and it will show up as this little icon with a bulb. It will either be red or blue depending upon whether it's active or deactive and what this application does is it is a legacy uh, bridge to convert data from LORS3 which talks an old legacy language over into current protocols like E131. So this little application needs to be running whenever you are running LORS3 and outputting data. Now, it can also cause problems when it's running and it's not outputting data. So be aware that if you are testing with XLights 2012B or other applications and you have LORS3 installed and the control panel is running by having that icon in the bottom right hand corner, make sure to right click it and say unload. You'll get weird random flashing and other types of things. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start with configuring our uh, outputs. So we're going to go ahead and start the LOR sequence editor. 
And in this particular case, we're going to cancel out of sequences because we need to set up the output first. Now, we are in this case using LOR 3.12.2, which is the current version as of this release. And this is S3. And we're going to go ahead and go to Edit, Preferences, and then we're going to go to Network Preferences. I'm going to go ahead and move this up here just so you can see this. Edit, Preferences, Network Preferences. And then we got it uh, on here on the DMX tab. But let's start off over here on the LOR tab. It is possible if you have an LOR network um, to run both the LOR network or networks together in parallel with E131 controllers. So in other words, LOR can basically talk two languages at a time to two different, totally different networks. So you can have LOR talking to your traditional LOR network, all in the LOR proprietary protocol, and also outputting DMX to our AlphaPix controllers. Now, if you have LOR networks, they will appear here as either regular, AUX1, and so on. If you do not have any LOR controllers and you do not have a dongle, you'll go ahead and need to turn this off. So go ahead and select none. Because if you don't, you will receive errors when you go ahead and start up uh, the port listener. Okay, so next we're going to go ahead and click on DMX. Um, and you'll see that they're none configured. So you may see this particular view when you first come in. And if so, you'll need to click the advanced. And this will bring up that menu again. And you can see that we have universes. So these go from 1 through 999, which gives you plenty of outputs. And so we're going to configure universes 1, 2, and 3 to match up with the outputs that we configured in the actual configuration uh, in the web page. So first, let's go ahead and click on universe 1. We're not going to use an adapter. We're using E131 because this is an E131 controller. And we're going to do the IP address. And it's already entered here, but yours will show 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0. And what we're doing here is we're telling it where it says specify. And specify is actually code word here for unicast, which is we are sending data directly to this controller. Multicast is where you're sending data to the entire network and any controller out there that uh, is set up to work with that particular uh, universe will turn on. In our case, we're going to use unicast, which is the specify option. We're going to enter our IP address. And this is the default address I'm using. And we can see here that the default address is automatically showing on the LCD. So we're confirmed. This is also the same one, of course, you would have used to access the web page. Go ahead and click OK. Now you'll notice that there's nothing in here about DMX addresses. And we're going to go ahead and configure that in just a minute. So we've got universe 1 configured to this IP address. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing for the rest of these. Okay, we've now set up universes 1, 2, and 3. Universes 1, 2, and 3. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Now, when you set up outputs, the outputs apply to all sequences you're going to run. Because your hardware does not change, what changes is your sequences. And your sequences may or may not use a controller. So for example, you may have this controller configured in your display, but you may choose not to use it for one sequence. So you are going to set up the hardware, which will always be present. So what we're going to do is go ahead and close LORS3 so it will reset its options and have that hardware available. Then we're going to go ahead and restart. And you can either select an animation or a musical sequence. Uh, normally you would select a musical sequence. We're going to select an animation so we don't have any audio. And go ahead and click OK. We just take the defaults. So now what we have is we have a basic grid that LOR has put in for us. And if we hover it or click on it, we can see that the device type is LOR. Now, if you have LOR controllers, that's fine. But in our case, we're configuring this alpha picks. So what we want to do is go up to Tools, then to Channel Configuration. And you can see the LOR controller. It's LOR controller unit 1 with uh, 8 outputs. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and, whoops, I'm sorry, and remove these additional channels. Can't remove the last one, but then we're going to click Add Controller. And we're going to be adding a DMX Universe-based controller. So we're going to go ahead and select DMX Universe. 
and we're going to select universe 1 and you'll notice that 16 channels and there's no option for in our case 9 remember we had 9 channels uh, that's because LOR is stuck in the belief that everything is an LOR controller but that's okay we can get around that by just simply selecting 16 click OK and what will happen is LOR is going to set up 16 outputs our 16 channels now let's look at some of the way that it's uh, naming these so there is just new channel over here and we can put in a name that's more uh, descriptive uh, it does say the output device is DMX universe which we have configured at this point it is universe one remember we've got universes one through three configured there is no unit number in DMX it's only universe plus DMX address and even though this says circuit right here it's not a circuit it's actually a DMX address so what we have is DMX address one two three and so that is this pixel right here so we have this output and here's the pixel that is one two three now it goes to one through uh, sixteen we won't use the sixteenth so actually what I'm gonna do is go ahead and just delete a few of these just for clarity and now we have DMX addresses and I'm also going to delete this LOR default one two three four five six seven eight nine so that's my first string of pixels connected to output one now we're going to go ahead and add another controller uh, this time again DMX universe this is going to be DMX universe 2 we're going to show you a slightly different way to add universe 3 at the same time so you're going to add universe 2 but this time we're going to add 32 channels uh, because we're going to be adding 18 outputs or channels click OK so what we have is now universe 2 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 and you can see here universe 2 well we know through universe 2 right here we only have nine channels DMX channels so what we're going to do is we're actually going to change this to universe 3 DMX channels 1 and universe 3 DMX channels 2 and DMX channel 3. Now I won't go ahead and configure all of the outputs on this one but you can see where we're going with this so you could add them and change them directly. We're going to go ahead and click OK. Now if we're ever not sure what a channel is you can just hover it. You can see that this is DMX universe 1 circuit which again DMX address so that is this is telling us that if I'm on this channel we're on universe 1 right here universe 1 this whole string and in this universe 1 what we have is circuit 3 so if they are mapped in red green blue which is the typical way red is going to be channel DMX 1 2 is going to be green and blue is going to be channel 3 so if we were actually to turn this on, it would actually be channel 3. So let's go ahead and do that. Ah, oops, I'm sorry. So what we're going to do is go ahead and turn this on. Just go ahead right here, put uh, a little bit of an on. Again, we're looking at universe 1, circuit 3. Now, what should happen is this pixel should turn blue. Now, to make the output work, we do need to go up here to play and say control lights. Now, if your control lights becomes unstuck for example if you play the sequence and then you go back and you notice control lights is turned off uh, this is because you have your LOR network uh, configured and you do not have an LOR network so be aware that if your control lights is not checked off which it has to be to output data while it's running uh, uh, see our website for more information now we're gonna go ahead and say start the sequence and you can see the light turns blue right there so let's try something else So we're gonna turn this off and we're going to go ahead and turn this red, then green, then blue. And we'll do the next pixel in line with all three, which will be white. And then we'll turn white on on the third pixel here. So this is channel 9, universe 1. And so let's go ahead and play that. So again, what we should see is red, green, blue on the first pixel, then white on the second pixel, and then finally um, white on the uh, third pixel. All right, go ahead and hit play. Red, green, blue, white, then white. All right, now let's look at output number two, uh, which is DMX universe two. So here we have, right there, we have our output two, right there. And this is DMX address one on output two or universe two. So we'll go ahead and just turn that on. And if we hover it, you can see 
Universe 2, DMX Channel 1. We'll just turn it on red, uh, red, green, blue, which is going to be white. And then we'll turn on the next channel after that. And we're going to go ahead and hit play. And you can see that that's working just as expected. So, as you can see, it's fairly easy to set up LORS 3 when you do the proper testing sequences beforehand and configure the outputs properly. If you've purchased advanced support, you can reach us via holidayquo.com slash contact us and we'll be happy to help you with additional issues you may experience within LOR. Thank you very much.